This is the IPLD gateway spec talk. So t today we're going to be looking at some ideas I've been kind of floating around gently, forcefully in people's face about how we can have high level APIs over IPLD that can be exposed in things like gateways, but also relating to places like IPLD protocol handlers. And so this is going to be a bit of an interactive talk. So I'm probably going to be pausing every now and then to get people's feedback, which I hope to write down in the chat or in a document. Um, yeah, so um, first of all, I wanted to talk about some of the goals I had um, in talking about this IPLD gateway spec. So the main thing that I want with this is to make IPLD a first class citizen of this IPFS ecosystem and of gateways. I want people to think of IPLD not as like some weird extra header, but as like a thing that you talk to to work with applications. Um, and also I want it to be simplified for, you know, devs that don't want to get super down in the weeds or for things like like clients, like say um, there's examples in the IPFS ecosystem where stuff like FFmpeg is going to do a uh, HTTP request to a local gateway in order to load some data. It'd be nice if we could have similar UX for IPLD, where rather than in, in like embedding Go IPLD Prime in your application, you can have a light way of interacting with IPLD that still does everything you want. Um, as well, it'd be nice to expose the data that we have in the ecosystem without all of the UNIXFS isms. Because right now, you know, I could get data out with a CID from the slash IPFS prefix, but there's going to be a whole bunch of extra baggage in there to account for how DAG PB works and how um, UNIXFS works. So also, I want to have a clear path for new developers coming into the ecosystem to think about how they can integrate ADLs and schemas with all of this stuff. Um, as well, like, Reading IPLD data isn't enough, and I just got out of the writable gateways talk, so uh, it seems some folks might be missing context from there, but writable gateways are a thing, and they're happening, and totally being standardized. It'd be cool if we could read IPL data, but also write it out. Um, so as well, one of the goals of just doing this talk here is it'd be cool to get some ideas going and find folks that would want to use this or... Um, have opinions on it existing. So one example is the light clients, um, examples for like how to frame these ideas. So like web browsers with custom protocol handlers like Brave or Egregore, or say we have environments where getting an IPLD library is just not realistic. Like say we have a PHP developer and they really want to do IPLD, but it's a huge pain. They should be able to do um, what they want. So with that in mind, let's talk about some of the basics, like kind of the low-hanging fruit of um, what would an IPLD path and a gateway look like. So obviously getting a CID would be useful, and we could get from the new slash IPLD uh, subpath on a gateway. And already we can start extending that with leveraging the data model by changing in what format we want that data to be downloaded. So in HTTP land, we have the accept header, which tells the server, hey, I want the thing at this path, but I want it in a particular format, which doesn't get used that often, but we can use it with IPLD to hint at which um, encoding we want back. Because oftentimes, you know, JSON might be easier for a web application to parse than DAG Seabor, but the data itself might be stored in DAG Seabor. So with the accept header, we can tell it um, that we want to accept JSON, or we could give it one of the custom MIME types that I don't know if these are standardized at all for. Um, they are. They're totally they are standardized. <laughs> yeah, so we can kind of leverage IPLD's way of converting between different formats to make it easier for applications to deal with data. Similarly, um, if we want to download data but we don't care about too much, we probably just want the gateway to give us whatever the encoding is so that there's no extra work being done. And in the response, it'll tell us what the encoding is, 
with the content type response header. Um, that's kind of, this stuff is kind of similar to what can already be done in the IPFS gateway. However, it kind of extends it with features that would be really kludgy. Like right now there's the format uh, flag for getting stuff out as a raw block, but this kind of centers the strengths of IPLD, which is the universal data model and the way of converting between things. But IPLD isn't just about the raw data model. We also have useful lenses for viewing data. So could we expose that in the path itself? So one thing I propose is having a new syntax in the path for signaling ADLs or selectors or whatever other IPLD-isms we have in this syntax within path segments. So alternately, this might make sense to put in the query string, but this is stuff that could be um, discussed more. So the syntax is pretty much the same format as query strings, but shoved in between square brackets inside um, the path segments. So in order to make this work and account for new data types, I also propose uh, standardizing how data gets uh, escaped. So already in the IPLD space, we have problems where we sometimes have path segments that are not UTF data, that are like some weird binary format which just like doesn't translate well to a string. And right now the answer to that has pretty much been like, you know, use Go and maybe it'll work or it doesn't work. Whereas with this, we can have a standard way of encoding data in the, in the URL scheme. So outside of that, it'd be cool if we could specify, um, you know, the custom parameters that we want to the um, traversal. And so this could in integrate with the rest of the ecosystem and we can have uh, serializers and deserializers from this URL format just out of the box in different languages, which would probably be easier to implement than um, you know, everything else. In fact, I have a JavaScript implementation that literally just uses the built-in URL pa parser and just adds an extra little bit for getting data out of segments. Um, so the question is though, what do we actually put in those extra little segment selector things? Is it like ADL names? And which ADLs? Is it just hash array maps tries since that seems to be a pretty well standardized ADL? Should we be linking to uh, schemas using raw JSON or should we be linking to it using a URL? Um, is there even a good way to serialize selectors? Because at the moment, it's like a deeply nested IPLD object, which is not too bad to generate with code and validate with code, but it can be very verbose. Um, so this is like an active thing to figure out, which maybe we could talk about more at the end, but like what are the things that are useful for signaling um, what the data is like when we're traversing and are URLs useful to the data or do we need to have all of the data in the, um, in the path itself? Um, but going from that, you know, getting data out is nice, but writing data I think is equally as important, if not more so, if we want people to actually produce stuff and build applications. So I wanted to look about some of the ideas we have in writable gateways for IPFS and IPNS and think about how that could work with IPLD as well. So the most uh, straightforward thing is if you want to post some data to the IPLD um, endpoint. And so that data can be encoded in whatever uh, encoding you want. And then it'll process that, parse it out, and then spit back a new CID. So that encoding could be JSON, it could be DAG CBOR, protocol buffers, you know, whatever. Um, and similar to the way we can accept different encodings, we could also tell it what kind of encoding we're using in the body. So we're sending it JSON and we can tell it explicitly like, hey, this isn't just a random blob of data. This is actual structured IPLD data model data. Um, also a question here is, would it make sense 
to submit JSON to the gateway, but tell it to actually encode it as Seabor. So doing encoding client side is useful if you have the encoders, but it can be kind of cumbersome. What if we could leave that work to the gateway? So for example, um, this is useful for where, like, you know, again, if you're in the browser, JSON is super easy to use, or even if you're in like, um, let's say Swift on iOS, um, everything has a JSON parser, but JSON just kind of sucks, or JSON is not ideal for um, storing data. It's not the most efficient for that. So we can have kind of the best of both worlds and use the IPLD data model again, to convert into the format that's most useful for both sides. Um, similarly, if we want to um, add data to an existing IPLD tree, we could put some data at a subpath relative to a CID. So in IPFS land, it means uploading a file to a subfolder. In IPLD land, it means we are adding to the IPLD data model at a path, which um, some stuff to figure out there is, are we trying to inject just the raw map or whatever raw data is there, or do we want some way to like have it auto link or whatever else? So that's kind of simple writability. However, um, IPLD is cool in that we have this patch spec where now if I want to mutate a bunch of things or if I want to share it, what sort of changes I did, rather than having a bunch of ad hoc code that does traversal and modification, um, which is very efficient but can be hard to read, I can just have a patch set based on the uh, JSON patch spec. So effectively, it is a list of operations where you have the type of operation, you have the path where you're doing the operation, and potentially a value that you're putting there or replacing. So HTTP actually has a standard method called patch for patching data. And we now have a patch. Wow, I think it's a match made in heaven. It would be really cool if working with IPLD data sets as an application creator, I could just submit a patch set with the data that I want to change, and then the gateway can handle all of the nitty gritty traversal stuff. So from an application developer perspective, this simplifies everything. You need a lot less code to do potentially complex operations. And having deterministic change sets are useful because you can reshare them, verify them more easily, and kind of um, it's just great in every way. <laughs> so I think that all of these metaphors can also relate to uh, libraries for languages for working with IPLD. At the moment, if I want to use IPLD, there's this huge swath of tools and specs that I could learn to use it. Or I could use the built-in um, Go, or sorry, Kubo IPLD APIs that are kind of cool if you want to just get raw nodes, but it's kind of hard for advanced use cases. And personally, from working with, um, trying to work with trees of data, um, it just hasn't been enough, whereas now, if we have someone that's coming to IPLD and they're just like getting into the space, they're like, okay, I wanna put some data out there. I want to get some data out and I maybe wanna patch so, or make changes to a tree of data without having to like manually do all of those get and put operations. So I think these are useful, uh, useful um, metaphors and function names that people can use that can be translated between the gateway, between a potential command line interface, and between uh, or JavaScript and Golang and whatever other APIs. So this could really simplify the use of IPLD for folks. Um, so next I was wondering if we could talk about some stuff, like are there any other use cases that I didn't mention or that st struck out to you that we could talk about for doing this stuff. Um, is there anything that I mentioned here that should be you know, watched out for, or is there like glaring things missing? There are applications you can think of that could be worked on. Um, also, like, is anyone here interested in uh, using these specs or helping make them? Because um, I'm down to spec it out, but 
It'd be nice if people wanted it. Um, also, do we have buy-in from gateway maintainers? Because, I mean, I know probably one gateway maintainer that I could convince with enough time, but it'd be useful to like do a bit of, um, you know, asking around. Um, yeah, so that's what I got, but um, I was wondering if we could do a bit of question comments time. Yes. So one question, so when you create a like point on Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, unfortunately the audio doesn't go to like everyone, so if you wanna like summarize questions that come in so that they can hear. Yep, we'll do, we'll do. So with the right set, I assume that it's the gateway itself has been storing that block and then announcing itself, that's a local block. Yeah, so the question was, is the gateway storing the block that we're writing? Is it like local to the gateway? And I think some of the subtext there, if I'm hearing correctly, is, is it like pinning the data locally forever? Or is it going to disappear after a while? And uh, I don't know. That's probably something that we should spec out. Because at the very least, it's going to have the data on there. And maybe we need some contract that says like, it either if it's like a local node, uh, like akin to the IPFS daemon running locally, maybe we could just assume that it'll keep it forever. Or maybe we need to think about um, how pinning services can work with IPLD D data, where we can say, okay, I uploaded the data, but now if you want it to persist, upload it to Web3 storage or give the CID to Web3 storage. So um, that's a good question. That's probably something that should be uh, covered by the spec or an explainer doc. So, so you were mentioning how in Go and IPFS, there's a way to just upload a block. If there is a specific node you want to upload it to, did I understand correctly? Uh, it's not restricted to blocks, it's just a generic case, it can be, but it's a, a proxy, basically proxy, basically proxy, basically proxy, basically proxy, basically proxy. Okay, so there is an HTTP proxy in the gateway in Kubo that already handles uploading blocks. Um, yeah, that's useful, but at the same time, I'd like to bring up that it assumes that managing that block is now on the client side, which means the client side needs all of the libraries for knowing what a, how to assemble a block, how to disassemble it, how to upload the individual ones. So it adds um, complexity, which a gateway that supports IPLD out of the box can kind of gloss over. Um, Adin, did you have a comment? Well, I have a oh, yeah. So, um, two, two thoughts. Um, for selectors, I would like just skip the serialization question and say if you really want to use selectors, post the request body. Um, selectors are pretty complicated. Like I feel like a lot of what people want is paths over oh, ADLs anyway, so you can use selectors as like a backup case. Um, the other thing, uh, the other thing I was thinking is around the HTTP roads we're using. There's this little bit of a philosophical like incompatibility between REST and immutable data because like a put in a patch is not supposed to change the URL, but like theoretically, but basically any change you make in IPLD will produce a new URL by design because uh, you know gives you a new state. So I don't know, is it everything on post then? I'm not sure. Um, so regarding the selectors thing, that's a really great idea. I think probably it might be useful to think about that more async in spec work. It, if I may, I'd like to ping you for that um, in the spec repo. But regarding HTTP verbs, or sorry, that I, I should repeat it first. The comments that were brought up was um, that selectors, we probably shouldn't bother having them in the path segment because they're really complicated and what people usually want are ADL um, traversals anyways. So selectors might be a secondary thing that we can figure out how to do like as their own thing. Um, the other thing was how HTTP verbs like put and patch probably don't uh, expect semantically to create new entities. 
and it seems in this case new entities would be created. So regarding the creation of new entities, um, you know, <laughs> it, best we could do in the IPFS case. Um, so what the writable gateway currently does is if I put or post some data to IPFS, it'll return a, a uh, 201 status code, which says that the entity was created and it'll have a location header in the response, which says where it was created. So like the status code can kind of like inform what it is, but um, you know, it's kind of trade off, like best effort. How close can we get to something restful? Um, rest, yeah, rest. I mean, yeah, like what even is rest these days? Like people don't even use a uh, soap or whatever anymore. Um, yeah, but those are useful points. Um, I think Adine had a thing, and then you and then you. Um, I have a couple. They're they're both like short, and the answer might be like. We should have another thing to talk about this. Mm -hmm. uh, so, one is, do you feel that a gateway spec should contain the things that it, that are the things that are the pieces that are the configurable pieces that are supported? So you made a comment about which ADLs do we support, but we don't make that comment about which code we support. I guess so. Like, why why distinguish? I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I mean, like, are, is there, uh, the comment was, uh, do, how do we basically expose which ADLs are supported? Like, is it part of the spec? Is it the gateway decides which codecs and ADLs are supported or? Yeah, does that make sense? Like, like is it why, a question? Why, you may, you may comment about, like, we should think about which ones you want to support, should it be hands or something? But we don't make that distinction for codecs in the gateway. Like, why would we care? Yeah, why would we care is a good question. But also for Codex, um, I mean, there are going to be limitations too, right? Or I, I, it's not I, part of the gateway spec, right? There's no, we don't, yeah. even, even in the world now where Lytle has written very nice gateway specs, I don't think anyone writes a spec that's like, gateways now support DAG, you know, DAG Jose. Gateways now support, yeah. Gateways now support, you know, mm -hmm. whatever new product of the day. Well, I mean, f speaking of gateway specs, I think Lido mm -hmm. has a great example of specs supporting formats explicitly in that um, in the format header that got introduced, it explicitly says which formats are currently supported, which I don't know if the wording there says that there may be others or if there may be others that are explicitly uh, done in a spec. Do you think you could talk to that, Lido? So, uh, the nice property of HTTP is that you can always give it an error. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, some people may decide to only support block and file responses, and for everything else, if the accept header or the format parameter is not passed, just return it to the uh, And I think the same thing is, will be forecasted for Codex. Right now, those two specific one formats are really, really useful because they are like low level things, specially crafted uh, gateways for special use cases and purposes, they could support more. If someone uses that Jose, they could support it. The, we omitted that on purpose because the codec table does not fit on the entire screen. That's one reason. And another one is the way, when I was writing the gateway specs, it was the minimum description of current state. And also signaling possibilities, but without being too prescriptive. Mm -hmm. So the things that we documented there were only like very low level primitives. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would be very cautious uh, with, like, with including very specific things. I think that, we, that where we may push the boundaries is adding uh, IPLD data model codex as like things that people may implement similar to car and uh, block response formats in that, that any IPLD data that follows data model could be requested to be returned as that JSON or that support. Mm -hmm. 
Is that the line in the sun? I'm open to suggestions. Uh, mm. I think that's some of the discussions we may have later on Friday. There's a, another HTTP IPFS gateways uh, talk uh, in the browsers uh, chat, I think. Cool. So if I could summarize what you said, it seems like existing spec work might mention some specific formats that will probably be supported, but ultimately um, the gateway might error out and your code should probably account for that. And also it's good to start minimal and then kind of like see about expanding from there. Yeah. That so makes sense. I think that some, some discussions I had around specs in general was that people have very good ideas. The problem is now I'm when I'm mostly wearing the specs hat, is that every little thing you add, it suddenly adds a burden to the person that will implement it. Mm -hmm. So, one, if we add new things, we should really double check if we, how we add them. Do they pull in too many new dependencies? And if we agree to add something mm -hmm. new, probably should be like a separate uh, spec or yeah. a thing that people can opt into implementing. Mm -hmm. We should like avoid tightly coupling the ballooning the way the path gateways decay. Yeah. So. Cool. Um, I don't know if I'm over time. Uh, yeah. Is there something you want to add something? Um, well, okay. I probably should have booked a bigger block is <laughs> my thinking. But I think this is super useful. I'm wondering if maybe we could have some discussions on GitHub, so, um, or tomorrow. Or so this, tomorrow. So this session has, yeah, so this session is uh, part two of it, uh, is part two and three are tomorrow. Okay. Uh, part two is data transfer, which is in the morning, and then part three is for both data transfer and uh, for modeling this. Uh, we have like a whole, just like big old block of empty space. Yeah. Um, so. That would be cool. I, I think I have a thing that, uh, is the browsers track tomorrow also? Uh, browsers is on Friday. Okay, There's cool. Projects for me in the morning and browsers is uh, on the lunch. Okay, I would absolutely love to talk about this more because, um, or does anyone have something that they think they absolutely need to like blurt out before we move on? I mean, even if they did, oh, I'm sure they'll yeah. <laughs> I'm terrified of using HTTP verbs, especially hash. Like, what if we use a different hash stack? Oh shit, we're out of verb space. There's no verb space left. It, it may be safer to just the post. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. I mean, like, we, we have RPCs which are most of the time. Cool. And then people don't. And we just, you clearly say that this is not REST API. If you include that sentence as the very first sentence in your spec, mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, thank you all very much for the discussion and for listening. Hopefully we can resume this tomorrow and hopefully this can start getting you thinking about like other ways we can interact with IPLD and how we can make it um, more centered, easier to use and expose all of the goodies to everyone. Um, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>